Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are watching this interview. Uh, today we have Xavi Rodriguez Corral. I hope I get that correct. Uh, he's currently playing now in Bristol Welsh and also he's currently the coach from the Cardiff uh, Futsal Uni team. Uh, he has an amazing career like playing in Durham, also being a part in Newcastle. Uh, reading Royals, if I'm not wrong, and also you play professional futsal in London, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. So, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Miguel, for giving me the chance to be interviewed. I'm looking forward to, to, to this. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of a significantly long career playing futsal in the UK. Uh, I've been around for about 10 years and played for six, seven different clubs. And um, yeah, you could you could consider that I made I made it professional or semi-professional when I was playing in London for a couple of years. And I am now back in Cardiff, both playing for Bristol Welsh in the National Futsal Series in England and also looking after the university team. Yeah. Okay, Xavi, the first question I want to ask you is about, uh, well, you were born in, in Barcelona, uh, in Bilasar de Mar, if I pronounce that correctly. That's yeah. correct, that's correct. And yeah, I want to know how does futsal came to cross to you? Like, how does it came to your life to play futsal? Yeah, so f futsal is a big part in, in, in Spanish society in general. So when I, when I, when I grew up, futsal was, was a big thing. So it was natural for me to join a futsal club, a futsal community. Since a very young age, I started playing futsal for my town, my club town, when I was five years old. And I spent most of my youth playing futsal I went until I was like 14, 15 years old. I represented the, the, the Catalan national team. So I was well into the futsal community and until the point where I decided to move into 11 aside. So then I left futsal a little bit behind and started playing 11 aside for a few years until I first moved to England when I decided to, to do a little bit of both, but mostly focus on, on, on the futsal side. Something interesting I found here, and I wanted to ask you about this, just like, what are these differences you find between that uh, first stage you have in, in futsal, like more formative at a young age, compared when you arrived here to Cardiff Uni, that you came older, like, uh, if I'm not wrong, around 20s, the 21, 22. Which are those differences from the first stage of futsal formation in Spain you have, compared to the futsal experience as a player you have in uni? Yeah, so so basically when, when I was young, and basically you play for fun. So I for me, it wasn't like, uh, I, I would take it seriously, I would enjoy playing it, but I was not never trying to sort of like get better or, or, or with, with the aim of becoming a futsal player. So I was just very young. I was enjoying playing like a competitive, relatively competitive sport where I could get loads of touches on the ball. And it did help that I had very good coaches. But at the time, I wasn't really that concerned or about getting better as a futsal player. I just wanted to enjoy futsal. But the more you play, the better you get at that. Mm -hmm. And then with the help of the coaches, you realize that you're becoming a, a good futsal player. And then when I came to England or to Wales initially, um, the only problem I had is the, the lack of knowledge of the sport. Ten years ago, futsal was, was, was just starting in Wales. Um, we, there wasn't really like a pathway for futsal for young futsal players, so there wasn't really any sort of coach, coaches with the knowledge that the Spanish coaches have. So it was mostly, again, playing for fun. Um, still managed to, to, to learn from different coaches I've had here, but it was a different sort of environment. So it was like, like starting again. I had to, uh, as a yeah. player, I had to actually coach some of my teammates, coach them the rules again, mm -hmm. um, and start to, to make it into more like a professional environment, if that makes sense. Yeah, and something like relates to that is also your, well, your experience in Newcastle University that you literally needed to to build the university team from scratch, like you and other like bunch of players around there. How was that experience? Uh, were like the, the struggles you encounter in that stage in Newcastle University were the same, like you needed to find like someone that maybe couldn't start better futsal and then you train them or how was that? 
Yeah, so when I first moved to Newcastle University in the north of England, the sport was was not known, pretty much not known. Uh, the university institution had no no facilities, obviously no futsal team. So I moved there straight after playing in the Champions League in 2015. Yeah. So it was a big shock for me because obviously I wanted to continue playing futsal, but I didn't have the means, I didn't have the... Uh, the facilities to play. So I spoke to the, the university, the Athletics Union, and they gave me the opportunity to play football, but no futsal, which I wasn't happy with. So I decided to set up my own club. I started from okay. scratch. I made did some trials and managed to get like a few players involved. So obviously it was quite challenging in the first year to try and get up to speed with the other institutions or big teams in the country. So we managed to, it was like a building a team more than anything the first year. Once we had the foundations of the team, then that's when I decided to take it a little bit more professional. So I became officially the coach of the team for the next two years. And we had official trials. We got some good players in and we started to, to build, to build and get better. Um, we also, there was investment coming from the university to, to build a new sports center, which facilities for futsal. And it all came naturally because we were all invested players, a very committed group of talented players. So we just started winning games, winning competitions to the point where the, we found ourselves playing at pretty much the highest standard in England in the, in the, in the university environment. And they, when I left, the university team was playing the Premier Division, which is the higher levels, the higher level you can play in, in, in England. And just like following that line from the experience like how you feel now that you look back and now you see for example Newcastle University like actually competing for those first positions in the is it the North Premier Division the yes. unis how do you feel that because like you know it's always like it seems like it's pain of like all this effort you know yeah it's, it's, it's a mix of feelings obviously I'm very proud of what I did I'm very proud of the boys who took after uh, the club when I left, so they did they did very well, very good things for for the club, and obviously seeing them doing well, I think they are currently second in the, in the north. Okay. Um, it, 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 yeah, it, it fills me with, with pride, and and I want them to, to do well. But equally, we are in the same division, we are in the south, and yeah. there is a very there is a there is a, a very good chance that we might have to play them in the playoffs. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm the head coach for, for Cardiff University. Yeah, for Cardiff Uni, yeah. And, and I'm in charge of a, a very talented group of individuals, and I'm going to do my best to to beat them if needed, needed and, and progress into further stages of the of the playoff. Okay. Uh, so now talking more about uh, the English futsal, one of the first things I want to ask you before moving forward to the list of questions is just like, what are some of the difference that you can spot from not only the English futsal player, but from the British player compared to, I don't know, to a Spanish player from a Portuguese player that also develops some futsal. What are one of like the key points or strong points in a British player of futsal? Yeah, I think the, the, the main difference, if we start talking about the main difference, is there is not really yet a pathway for young players in, in England to develop as futsal players. So there, there is not much investment at a, a grass, grassroots level, not many facilities. Therefore, promoting the sport and creating good futsal players from a very young, young age is very difficult. If you compare that to countries like Brazil, Spain, Argentina, Italy, um, Portugal, they this loads of it's, it's a well-established sport so loads of facilities loads of good coaches so naturally players from a very young age they become they become adapted to they adapt to the sport and they become very 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 well sort of yeah good futsal players so the good thing about uh futsal english players i would say is um anything to do with fitness anything to do with physical appearance so that's what they have or they have gained over other over, over, um, um, Europeans or international nations. So that's one of the positive things of the country. The aggressivity of the games, mm. intensity, that's probably much better than you would see in any other leagues. But when it comes to tactics and technical ability, there are a few steps steps okay. below other nations. And it's good that you mentioned like this comparison between countries. It's just like uh, before coming to this interview, I was preparing and some of the articles they always mention like in football there are like these two groups of countries like one of them is like this group that there are not really successful countries in a football context 
but uh, in their environments apply, for example, in Russia, Kazakhstan, also Thailand or some South Asian Pacific countries that the lack of the space and also the environment, like for example, in Russia, that the seasons do not like helps to play in an outdoor pitch or something like that. They have developed this system that they allow them to to be good, not only, for example, in futsal, but also in other type of futsal, like beach soccer. Mm -hmm. But there, there is also this other group that is the ones you mentioned, like Brazil, Argentina, uh, now that Portugal is rising like a good national team, and also Spain. It's just like, of course, you have mentioned some of those things, yeah. but w why England? No, like England having this maybe in the middle of these groups because it's like, the weather is not that nice and they could apply that. And also they have a really successful like football history or like a football connection. Absolutely. So, so if, we, if, if, if you let me answer this question, yeah. so focusing on first like one type of teams and then the others, mm. and then we can we can yeah, of course. The England situation. So obviously about the in Spanish teams, the, uh, sorry, about the, the nations that are successful in football that have implemented futsal from an early, very early age. Um, the reason why they are successful is because most of these players, they grew up playing futsal in the street because it's a very common sport. You have loads of outdoor courts going up um, everywhere. You have academies that they offer like one, two sessions a week of futsal. Even though you might be playing football, they offer like a futsal. So futsal is part of yeah. this society. Even though you might be a footballer at school, you play futsal, you don't play 11 aside. So naturally you become a more technically gifted player and that helps when when you are start your career as a footballer yeah. if you're a technically good and tactically good uh, football player because of futsal it helps you um, that's the case of countries like Brazil like we were saying Portugal um, Spain etc the other side of the spectrum is teams that are not doing very well or are not as great in, foot, in the football environment but they have developed futsal as one of the biggest sports like Kazakhstan uh, Russia, etc. The main reason why they're doing well is because what you were saying, in the early 90s, they started using as futsal as a sort of like complement to football when the season didn't allow to play outdoors. And that's led into having a system in which you have quite a lot of international players in Kazakhstan, lots of Brazilian players in Russia as well, that, that they ended up playing um, futsal because yeah, football wasn't as big as I was saying. It's very yeah. difficult to maintain uh, outdoor grass pitches in these countries. It's very expensive. Yeah, of course. So that's why they need to develop indoor sports like futsal. To that, if you are the fact that you have a lot of international players, and in the case of Russia, you have a lot of money to invest in, in futsal, in sport, yeah. you bring in more talent that raises the national league and naturally will raise the standard of the, of the national team. And then... Going back to the England situation, obviously it would be a great country for futsal because most yeah. of the time the weather doesn't allow to play football. Games go, get called off all the time, so it would be it would be very good for this country to invest in in indoor facilities and allow more players to be into futsal. The only problem I see in England is there is a lot of sports, so it's not just football or futsal. You yes, have rugby, rugby, cricket, you have yeah, cricket. You have lacrosse. You have uh, you have so many sports. Um, in the case of futsal, you have uh, five-a-side indoor football, which is what's taken over this country for many years, and which is something that doesn't benefit the progression of futsal in the country. Oh, yeah. That, that was one of the last questions I wanted to ask you, and it's good that you bring it now. It's like, of course, like me being as a uni student and being able to see what you say is like, five indoor side is just taking like a lot around the area not only here in wales but also in england and yeah companies like the power league huh? so do you really think that this is not like beneficial in order like maybe in the future help the development of futsal or the interest in futsal i think companies like like, like the Power League will never be in favor of developing futsal just because it goes yeah. against the principles the power league mostly is like five aside or four four aside uh, yeah. football outdoor so for them to invest in futsal it would not make much sense financially because they will have to build um, indoor facilities and in a futsal pitch you can probably have four to six uh, five aside pitches for, sure. for power league so financially it would not make sense for them so that's why I don't see them really helping the development of this sport in England okay and well then Going back, it's just like um, 
well, you, you have been saying and highlighting that point that maybe like there is not like a big development in the grassroots in, in England, but also like saying, so, so then we can argue that uh, developing grassroots in England in futsal could then help also to football, like talent, like mm -hmm. to develop also talent in football. And also like connected that with one of my questions, is just like um, how do you see this option for maybe players that does not make it to professional football, but want to continue like in a professional sport and competitive sport like futsal? Yeah, so I'm going to answer this question in, in two parts. So the first one is for, for, for those who professional or players that they don't make it professionally as footballers. So I think futsal can give a very good opportunity for them to compete at a high level in a professional environment um, for those that for whatever reason they couldn't make it in 11 aside because 11 aside there's like thousands of people playing yeah. it's very difficult only one percent or 0.1 percent of the of footballers make it professionally so it's a very tough environment whereas futsal if you grow up with the right skills and the right coaching you can make it to the highest level in england and potentially represent your country so it offers a very good opportunity for those that couldn't make it professionally in football from a year from a, from a young age to be part of like a professional environment very enjoyable is the sport is growing in the country this is, is being showcased in bt sport so there's already team professional teams with contracts so it's a very good opportunity for young talents who for whatever reasons they are not going to make it pro in football but it gives them this pathway to belong to, a, to be part of a professional environment. And the other question, it was about um, how can futsal help? Yeah, to, uh, to the football and develop talent. This, this, this has been the case. It's actually a, um, a statistic that I was reading about the other day. Um, out of the 10 England captains from a young age, starting from the under 11 to under 19, out of the 10 captains, nine of them grew up playing futsal as a complement to football. Mm -hmm. So there is already like benefits to that. You can see them. There is also this player who uh, played a captain, England, Max Kilman, who's now playing for Wolves in the Premier League. Okay. So there's a few cases in which you can see how futsal can help you develop both technical and tactical skills that you can then go and use into futsal. So there's loads of benefits in, in integrating futsal into the into an academy. In here in, in, in Wales, the FAW is insisting in football academies to introduce futsal at least one day a week because they can see the benefits that this can make for, for professional football in, in the future. Okay, so, well, taking a point in that, it's just like, well, we know that you have been, you said like 10 years in professional futsal here in England. H how you see now that the support is, is really growing and how far you see that they, like, English futsal could take place in a really competitive stage, for example, in the Champions League or something like that? I think the, the, the sport clearly is growing um, and it has been growing for, for several years. And we are currently facing a, a very good opportunity in British futsal because a lot of there's a lot of investment coming in into futsal. There's a lot of partnerships, a lot of sponsorships. Uh, currently, BT Sport is showcasing the, the, the NFS, the National Futsal Series. So we're in a great uh, and a very exciting opportunity, especially for young, talented football or futsal players to be part of like something very exciting. Um, it's not going to come overnight. So we are not going yeah. to be, a we're not going to become a professional league overnight. It's going to take several years. Investment from the FA, uh, growing the sport from a very young age, but England are in the right path for, for, for this to happen. Um, due to COVID, uh, and sort of budget restrictions from the FA, the England national team had to be suspended, but there's been talks now to reinitiate the program, so that will help to promote the sport even, even further. So if you're a kid and you know that you can play, you can represent your country in a worldwide environment, playing like World Cups and Euro Cups, just by committing futsal, why wouldn't you? So that's why yeah. it's very important to have sponsors, have the TV uh, showing games on the telly, on television and also having the national team as a pathway for young for young talent okay and something i i want to use like as a closure from the interview is just like talking about your your new stage here as, as a coach like now that you are a professional football futsal player and also a coach 
how, how is that like sort of difference between your era in Newcastle that like you also being like a postgraduate student, but now like being like stable and everything, like older, more experienced, now being a coach to Cardiff Uni. What's, what's the difference like you can spot uh, like in players, like in your own personal experience? Like, yeah, no, absolutely. It, it was a different stage of my life. So when I was in Newcastle, obviously I was the, the head coach, but equally I was the player as well because I was a player yeah. coach because I was studying there. Therefore, um, it was a little bit different, a lot of conflict of interest because you want to <laughs> you want to help everyone to get better, yeah. but at the same time you want to improve yourself. You want to give everyone opportunities in games, in training sessions, but at the same time, you want to play yourself. So it was a difficult period, I'm not going to lie. And it was difficult to adjust for me to have uh, a position of both leadership, being the team captain, being the coach, time to make selections, having to drop people that were my friends. Okay. That was a very hard decision to do. And that happened throughout the, throughout the years that was there. Um, but that's made me who I am today as a coach. So when I when I adopted this new responsibility, when I took on the, the role of head coach for Cardiff University, it's been a much easier environment to work with. I only need to focus on developing the players. I don't need to focus about myself. I don't need to give myself minutes because I do that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I have a club in which I have a coach that if I play well, he plays me. If I don't perform, he's not going to play me. When I'm with the Cardiff Uni batch, I just focus on the players' development and making sure that the club is all about them, which and, and I'm trying to enhance their university experience as much as I can because I know this is something that I enjoyed very much when I was at uni. It was like the highlight for me being part being part of like a, a futsal club, a futsal environment, and I just want to give back everything that I've earned throughout the years, everything that I experienced throughout the years. I want to I want to give it back to the students, and luckily I have a, a very good group of talented and very committed individuals who are happy to absorb all the knowledge that I'm giving them, although I know sometimes I think I'm very harsh on them because <laughs> I want them to, to improve. That's the reality. And I want to give back everything that was given from all the teams that I've been part of. And I want to give them all this knowledge and make sure that they enjoy the, the experience. Yeah, that's something like, uh, well, at least I, I want to take this moment to say is like, futsal is going to continue growing. And I think it has like a really bright future if people like you like keep being interesting in the sport because like me checking like all your history and your career in futsal is just, i don't know it's really amazing just to see how how passionate you are about the sport how passionate you are about like every single thing like minor detail of futsal and how you build a uni futsal team from scratch so i think in that case not only like in the british futsal but like in general futsal would find like a brighter future or like maybe a more globalized stage in mm -hmm. in the coming years but so, but yeah i would like you to maybe take your time to say something like a closure yeah comment for for the interview just some final words first of all thank you for again giving me the opportunity to 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 share my thoughts on what's my my, my career as a player as a coach been and second of all for those who watch this interview and they're interested in being part of 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 a very exciting yeah, program we have we have something very exciting to offer uh, for students for those interested in football and in futsal uh, there is a pathway for you to become professional futsal players after, after you leave university there is clear cases of players that have played for cardiff university and they've all gone on to become captains of the of the welsh national team one of my best friends he, he did that, played with me at university, and then he went on to become a professional uh, futsaler. So there is opportunities for those committed enough. And yeah, at the end of the day, if you put hard work in, you get the reward with futsal. It's as simple as that. If you believe in what you do, believe in your coach, believe in your teammates, believe in the club structure and strategy, um, things good things come come out of it. So yeah, that's that, that would be my closing thoughts. Yeah, well, thank you, Xavi. Thank you so much for your time. It was like a really amazing interview. I really was keen for having it. And yeah, thank you to everybody that has watched the complete interview. Like we're going to upload this to YouTube. So any comments you have, you can have it below. And yeah, thank you, everyone, for your time. Yeah. Thank you, Miguel. No worries. Bye-bye.